People that are watching right now, they're watching and they're probably like thinking they're in a time machine right now because they're like, is this Jimmy Walker that I'm looking at? Oh my God, bro. Right? <laughs> I'm so, no matter where I go. But I'm going to tell you something. That's something that I really didn't want to embrace. Mm. Um, I was at Atlanta Comedy Theater. Shout out to Atlanta Comedy Theater, my home club. And I uh, just got through doing a set. Cat Williams is in the audience. Mm -hmm. So Cat Williams walks up to me in the green room and he's like, young man, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the show, but you're on stage the whole time and you said nothing about Jimmy J.J. Walker. And I was like, nah, I don't want to get into that because that makes it a gimmick. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just want people to 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 like the craft of what I'm doing. He was like, listen to me, young man. I was I was literally Money Mike until I wasn't. Mm. So whatever gets you remembered, that's what you got to go with. He said, put that bucket hat on and don't ever take it off. And if, even if they don't remember who you are, they may remember the comedian with the bucket hat. Mm. And he's like, let me tell you something. Jimmy Walker was beloved by the world. Yeah, he was an icon Literally. of comedy. He yeah. said, and that will get you to the door. But he's like, you ain't got to listen to me, young man. <laughs> but I'm telling you, do it, bro. And I listened to his advice, bro. Start doing it. It started, it built me a brand. And the rest has been history. Like, because it's even if people came, oh, the comedian, wear the bucket hat all the time. Yeah. And, you know, shout out to Cat Williams for taking the time. I was like, literally, I was doing comedy for like a year. He didn't even have to come in there. Right. And everybody was looking. You got all these A-lists. Yeah. And he, he points me out. Yeah. And that's the type of person Cat Williams is, bro. Like, wow. like he's a giver. It was, it, it was crazy, bro. What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your day by day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y. And today... Ladies and gentlemen, I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by comedian and actor. You can catch him on video series, Country Wayne, which premieres on both YouTube and Facebook. You can also catch him in a city near you this spring as he will be featured on the King of Hearts comedy tour. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the one and only Jordan Jackson. What it do? Yo, yo, appreciate you having me, brother. Yes, sir. Thanks for pulling up. Um, you in the city, man. Welcome to Charlotte. How's it been treating you so far? Good, good. Me and my boy Pablo, we've been down here enjoying the food. Uh, yeah. what was, damn, I forgot the spot that we went. Romeo's. Romeo's, Romeo's Vegan Burgers. Bruh. I do my, I do my research. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Pablo. But yeah, Romeo's is an all-vegan spot. People from Charlotte know about Romeo's on South Boulevard. Uh, when I first moved out here, they used to have a truck. And that was one of the first food spots I came across. And I couldn't believe everything was vegan. It's that good. Bro, like, you don't, you don't even miss uh, beef? What's that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. it's that good. It is. It's another spot, though, they got here, uh, Bean Cuisine. You ever had that? I haven't been there yet, but that's a hot take, too. We going to add the show. Yeah, like, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, let me know how that is. What did you get from Romeo's? Uh, black bean burger. Okay, okay. And the fries. Did you get a chili fries? Chili oh, cheese fries? Oh, man. It, they ain't even advertised that. Oh, we might man. slide through there. Yeah, chili cheese fries. Again, it tastes like regular chili. Uh, shout out to Romeo. I kind of just gave them a free plug right there. Yeah, but... Y'all paying for the next one, though, just yeah. so y'all know. Yeah, my man's. Uh, so where <laughs> are you from originally? Originally from California. California. California, yay. Yeah, and southern. See, everywhere in Southern California. I live West Covina. <laughs> Got to live in Compton, Long Beach, uh, San Diego, mm. Escondido. Mm. You know, so yeah, I was moving around a lot because, you know, when you ain't Cali, where the family go, you go. Okay, were you like in the military or something? No, nah, I was in the broker Terry. It was just, <laughs> it was just <laughs> literally, <laughs> I go stay at my aunt for a little while, my cousin for a little yeah, while. It, yeah. it was bad, bro. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, made me who I am today. That's what's up, man. Shout out to SoCal, hence the uh, Lakers gear that oh, you yeah. have. Diehard Lakers, too, not just LeBron fans. I'm talking about AC Green. Michael Thompson with the beads, uh, Byron Scott, James Worthy, Magic Johnson, Kareem, you know, real Laker fan, yeah. die hard. I see, I see. And your tag is number one Laker fan, correct? Yes, sir. All right, so I have a few questions for you. Uh, first and foremost, will the Lakers win a ship before the year 2030? Uh, like championship? Championship. Uh, Finals, not just, not just Western. Before 2030, I think we got one in us. You got what? We got one championship. One, one, one. So we you want to get one ship, ship in the next we, five years? Yeah, it won't be this year, it's looking like, though, unless nah, we make a no. trade. Hell no, they're going to be this year. Okay, so it's on wax. That's Cameras. right, I predicted it. Audio yeah, 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 yeah. is on wax. In the next five years, the Lakers will win a championship, and you heard it here first from Jordan Jackson. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, so I'll take your word on that. My next question for you is, since you were the whole way through, 
Lakers fan. Go ahead. <laughs> Is that the uh, bill collectors that your baby mother stuck on you? Bruh, how'd you know? You, you going through the same thing a little yeah, bit? Yeah, bro. Yeah, oh, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to. I don't want we, <laughs> Pablo might have to break out the violin. Yeah, doggy. Well, we, we gonna we gonna stick to tech. Go ahead. What was that nah, next question? I, I don't have kids. Um, just my dog. That's the only Show kid off. I got. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So my next question: Since you were a Laker fan the whole way through, Magic, Kobe, or LeBron? Man, I gotta go Kobe just for the work at the but Magic is a, is a definitely honorable mention too. So if, if we go in order, mm -hmm. it's gotta be Kobe, Magic, LeBron. Then LeBron. Why yeah. Kobe number one? Work ethic, yeah. uh ultimate winner, yeah. uh, game on the line. He wants the ball, straight yeah. out killer. Yeah. Uh if he didn't pass you the ball, you knew why you didn't get the ball. Because there, there mm -hmm. were teammates he believed in. Mm -hmm. D Fish, Rick Fox, yeah. uh, all the cats that he knew that had the same, you know, type of work ethic that right. he had. So yeah, remember Ron Artest said that Kobe passed me the ball. He never passed me the ball. Like that's the whole intro to his song. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, that killer mentality for sure. Do you remember where you were and the vibe that was in the air the moment Kobe passed? Bro, I do remember. And it was one of the saddest moments um, of my life, bro, because I actually was in my office and my phone just kept going off, kept going off, kept going off. And I looked and I seen it and it just seemed surreal. Then they kept showing all these clips and stuff, bro. And, you know, as a man, you know, I technically didn't cry because it's not a real cry unless the um, tears fall from the whales, but they were definitely gathering up okay, in there, bro, because, yeah. you know, it's a man thing, yeah. you know, so as long as they don't fall, okay, gotcha. you know, you're still good, but, okay, one or two of them did fall. I was going to say, I think, I think one tear is cool. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think multiple tears is what make you know, yeah, what when makes it's it a little balling, wimpy. One, one, yeah, two, little wimpy. two at the most, two at the most. Um, but when it's, you know, when it's just two that just happen to fall. Just as long as don't no snot come out your nose, yeah, I think you, that it's, yeah, it's, yeah, once it's not, it's kind of wimpy. Tough. It's that's wimpy. Tough. But yeah, like, you know, I don't know. We, we, you know that's, that's a good question, though. Yeah. Is it technically crying or tearing? Uh, one, I think you can still be macho with one Teared tear. Up. And it can't trickle, though. Tearing up trickle. is one. Two or more is crying. Two or more. Yeah, because tears form in one eye before the for the other, regardless. You know what? That makes sense. Does but that, I feel if the trickle gets down to your chin, yeah, you you definitely gotta stop it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, gotta stop like, it. Like, you yeah, know, you gotta stop it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta stop it halfway through your cheekbone for sure. Um, yeah, it, that was a very weird day. I was doing training. I used to work for this football performance training company, uh -huh. and it was a uh, it was a Sunday. And, um, you know, I had my my kids, my athletes that we were training and it was water break. So they're all by their phones getting water and you just see them kind of gathering around and like kind of buzzing, you know, like that vibe, like when a fight's about to start or something, yeah. like you feel it. They're buzzing about something. And me and the other coach, like, what the hell are they talking about? And they're like, coach, coach, Kobe died. We're like, Kobe who? Right. Because yeah, definitely can't be right. Kobe. Kobe. What do you mean, Brian? Kobe? Kobe who? It's like, Brian, he just died. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? I'm thinking it's just some BS on Twitter, like... And then lo and behold, we check our phones and it's just going crazy with Everywhere, the reports. Bro. And I, it was very surreal. It was it really didn't hit until like later on. And I remember after that, I went to the store and it like was cloudy. It was just a very weird energy in the sky. And that was right before COVID. So that was like the start of just a weird time frame yeah. for the world in general, I think. Yeah, man, it was. It was tough, bro, because there was so much stuff that they were airing, you know, ESPN. And I didn't really know, like, I was a huge Kobe fan, mm -hmm. but there are Laker, there's Lakers fans and then there's Kobe fans. Because yeah, there's a lot facts. of people who rocked with Kobe yeah. that weren't really Laker fans, but he was so international and so loved by yeah. the world. Right. And you got to remember, we watched Kobe coming to the league at 18 years old, right. straight out of high school. Number eight with the Bush. Yes, and so I felt like this was my brother. You know mm. what I'm saying? I watched him his whole career. Right. And it, 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 it was devastating, bro. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was just... Like 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 you said, just unsurreal. Man. Yeah, it was. R.I.P. to the uh, to the you know the Black Mamba, um, to the goat in many aspects. And G.G. man, and all yeah, the family, G, everyone, everyone all the on family the helicopter. Members, yeah, because yeah. it was like multiple people in there. All right, um, to get on lighter topics, because that was deep. That was deep. Pause. So Pause. people that are watching right now, and if you're listening, make sure you tune into the video. They're watching, and they're probably like thinking they're in a time machine right now watching this because they're like, is this Jimmy Walker that I'm looking at? Oh my God, bro. Right? <laughs> I'm so, no matter where I go, yeah. it's people like, literally, 
and we and we use it as a video though. Right. I'm in Orlando. Yeah. This this uh security guy walks up to me and he's like, No way. <laughs> no way. Jimmy Walker. Yeah. And he's literally he's, and, and, yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, bro, you know Jimmy Walker would have had the AIDS. It, yeah. it was back in the 70s, but in his mind, but I just went along with it, right, bro. Right, like, yeah, right. it's me, man. It's me. It's like my wife's never gonna believe it. And literally, and the video went viral, bro. It's all on the shade room. Really? It was everywhere. But this dude But Jimmy Walker's like what, 80 or 90? Yes, bro, and he don't look nothing like this. Yeah. I mean, ain't no shake. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, but you, you know, know what I'm saying? Let me blame no crack, so, you yeah. know, but... Yeah, it's, it is cracked a little bit. Yeah. It, just, just, just a little bit. <laughs> but the, the thing is... But I'm going to tell you something. That's something that I really didn't want to embrace. Mm. Um, I was at Atlanta Comedy Theater. Shout out to Atlanta Comedy Theater, my home club. And I uh, just got through doing a set. Cat Williams is in the audience. Mm -hmm. So Cat Williams walks up to me in the green room. And he's like, young man... I enjoy I enjoyed the show, but you're on stage the whole time and you said nothing about Jimmy JJ Walker. And I was like, nah, I don't want to get into that because that makes it a gimmick. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just want people to 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 like the craft of what I'm doing. He was like, listen to me, young man. I was I was literally money Mike until I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So whatever gets you remembered, that's what you gotta go with. He said, put that bucket hat on and don't ever take it off and if, even if they don't remember who you are they may remember the comedian with the bucket hat mm. and he's like let's say something jimmy walker was beloved by the world yeah, he was an icon literally. of comedy he yeah. said and that will get you to the door but he's like you ain't got to listen to me young man <laughs> but i'm telling you do it bro and i listened to his advice bro start doing it it started it built me a brand and the rest has been history, like, because even if people can't read that, oh, the comedian, wear the bucket hat all the time. Yeah. And, you know, shout out to Cat Williams for taking the time. I was, like, literally, I was doing comedy for, like, a year. He didn't even have to come in there. Right. And everybody was looking. You got all these A-lists. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he points me out. Yeah. And that's the type of person Cat Williams is, bro. Like, wow. like he's a giver. It was, it, it was crazy, bro. I, I hear a lot of stories in regards to that of him giving, like, very wise words of wisdom for, like, you know, comedians that are up and coming. Uh, I heard Ha Davis say like a you know story similar to that. Um, so you know, contrary to you know the popular interview with him and Shannon Sharp, where he's either getting ridiculed or being agreed upon, it's a lot of you know great stories that come from the other side of him, yeah. including this one. Yeah, um, Cat Williams is a comedian's comedian. Like I've literally seen him. Just they some comedians just start give him money, bro. Just dap him up and just put money in their hand, like mm. the. That's love, bro. Yeah, yeah. When you're a real one, it's priceless. So that sometimes that's the least you can do. Facts. Um, so what did you think of his his comments towards other comics? You being a stand-up comedian, and it's like an industry in its own. And he did take shots at some other black comedians, and maybe he did it out of spite. Maybe he did it to shed some light to some truth that's been kind of foggy. Like, what's your take on just the way he approached about kind of, you know, commenting on other stand-up comments? Well, you know, my take on it is 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 this. Okay, Cat Williams went up there, said what he said, whether you believe it or you not. He, as an influencer and a content creator, mm -hmm. he basically gave a lot of comedians and influencers content to to reuse, to, to, to be able to talk about comedians who maybe weren't so relevant were relevant again because they had to respond. Mm. So really, if you think about it, he basically energized the Internet. Mm. OK, just by that one interview with Shannon Sharp. And yeah. so it trickled down all the way into ticket sales for everybody so my take on it was it was it, it was a great move and i just felt like for the beginning of the year it was needed mm. uh uh just for the 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 pure uh uh just for creating content like it it, it just helped the movement wow that's fascinating <laughs> It was kind of like an octopus. It it had so many avenues. Think about from it. it. Yeah, good. anybody name anything that he that, that he mentioned, whether yeah. it was whether it was negative or positive, ha there had to be a response to right. that. And so you basically helped every other platform. Mm -hmm. You helped Willie D's platform. <laughs> you you it, yeah. and it and it, it kept kept going. kept going and kept going. Yeah. And 
You you know, Mike Epps was joking, but was he really joking? You know, right. when he said, I wish he had said, I'm trying to sell these tickets too because uh, if he missing you and gave you something that you had to respond to. Yeah. And even if he didn't talk about you, people still, there. in the next six months, you're not going to have an interview or a stage that doesn't have at least something to do with that Cat Williams Cat interview. Williams. So think about that, the longevity of that yeah. for months and months and months to come. Like it was basically... He he gave money away in the, wow. in the best way that he could. My, but saw, Shannon Sharp, hey, because I know oh I, I know what the uh, what those numbers show because yeah. I do it. So it's like wow, yeah, you know, just so, on YouTube alone. Ooh, I mean, I know he wins, and that's without the cuts, the the the, 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 the repurposing, right? Yeah, yeah. But everybody else ate too. Mm. Think about it though, because now here's a response video. Here's a it 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 just and it's gonna go on and, and on and, and, and on. comics use response formula on their actual stand-ups. Yes. Michael Blackson just did. Like, he had a response when he had a stand-up towards uh, Cat yeah. Williams. He was frying Cat Williams. So that's good. All of it All of it works negative or positive. It all works. Now my story is more relevant now mm. <laughs> the, uh, than it was even back then. That was three years ago that he right. told me about that. So just think about it. But I got a good Cat Williams story, and I'm pretty mm. sure there's some. Some got good, some got bad. Right. But people want to hear it now where well, they might not have wanted to hear it uh, yeah. before that interview. Wow. And last thing, I bet people even went back and rewatched the Steve Harvey show For and like sure. stuck like, on the screen. Wow. Like, is it, is it really a damn? They're the glue right there. There damn. it is, bro. Like, real talk. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, I think it was great for comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you put it like that, yeah, that, that is gold, man. That's priceless right there. Um, So, Let's talk about you getting involved in comedy and acting. Uh, well, first off, were you actually a fan of Good Times growing up? Oh, definitely. Yeah? yeah okay. So, I, like, when did the first, like, peak of, like, similarity happen? <laughs> it's funny, bro. So, my, you my, JJ? My, my cousin, um, Tashi, mm -hmm. she's like... I think she may have been maybe five or six, and she comes in, and we're 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 watching we're we're, we're watching Good Times, mm -hmm. and she was like, Jordan, <laughs> she literally said it, yeah. looking at the TV, and they, they're not no, that's not Jordan, that, that's JJ, oh. and this was this is when I was younger, yeah, and and the, the similarities there, so for, for a very long time, but not not going through school or anything right. like that because you know it just never was a thing, yeah. But you know that's getting, but just to answer the question, very young at yeah. a very young age, yeah. which, which was just crazy. Wow. Okay. So that's when it uh, first start started. And whatnot. So what inspired you? Um, so everyone knows, and if you don't know, Good Times is a staple in the black community as far as TV shows growing For up, sure. right, all across the board. So what I want to do with you is I want to get some other black TV series involved, and I want to do a this or that. So this segment is called This or That. Pretty simple. I'm going to lay out two options, and you have to choose one. So this is going to be This or That black TV shows. Okay. You ready? All right, to start, <clears throat> Good Times or The Jeffersons? Good times for sure. Good times. In Living Color or Chappelle Show? In Living Color. Mm, that's the original. See, mm -hmm. People don't know that. That was the original skit skit show. All right. Martin or Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Martin. Martin. All right. Jamie Foxx Show or The Bernie Mac Show? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I'm glad this ain't drink champs because I'd have to take a <laughs> drink on that one, boy. But I'm going to go. Uh... That is tough. Oh man, I gotta go, Bernie man. But uh, yeah, but Jamie was really, really. That, yeah. To me, Jamie Foxx was the closest to to Martin um, out of sense. all the shows. Yeah, bro. that makes sense. Like, yeah, it was, it was similar. Good okay, question, so bro. Bernie Mac, but that was a close one. All right, Cosby Show or Sanford and Son? Mm. Okay, so I see you started out with the easy one. Yeah, but now yeah. I gotta go, Sanford and Son. Bro. Sanford and Son for me. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. All right, for the last one. Living single or Wayne's Bros? See, <laughs> the comedian me go wants to go to to, to Wayne's, Wayne's brother, bro. but the writing in Living Single and the togetherness and the the real relatability mm -hmm. um, pushes me. Yeah, so you didn't ask me for all that, and I told you anyway. I'm, I'm I, I gotta go living single, but yeah. I really appreciate what the Wayne's did. You know uh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, Wayne's brother sure, did. Sure. And I like what Wayne's bros did as far as having just the father in there mm -hmm. and not the mom, because they really wanted to emphasize a positive black father figure in the household, which wasn't so common. And you know, 
unfortunately still isn't as common in the black household. Yeah, brilliant. Show. You know, they really emphasize that, which I appreciate as well. So those shows, um, you obviously watch some good ones coming up. And like you mentioned, the com- the comedian and you wanted to, you know, choose, choose Wayne's Bros right there. So what inspired you coming up to get into that acting and stand up comedy lane? Um, Growing up, I loved, uh, well, the first time I seen Robin Harris perform, I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And I was in the the 10th or 11th grade. Now, I didn't think that was a reality, but I just loved watching him perform and it was so natural. It was it was it was it was so uh 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 uh, uh. like just just nonstop yeah. laughs and I just really really Love some Robin Harris, like Paul, you know, it, but it just, he just really made me love the craft of comedy. Like it was him. And then Jim Carrey uh, mm. for the, for the acting, it was like, I love the fact that this guy is himself mm-hmm. and there was nothing, no scene that he couldn't overdo, but still just, 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 it wasn't, it was slapstick, but yeah. it wasn't so slapstick that it was too silly and right. just overbearing. It wasn't cringy. It was perfect yeah. slapstick. Yeah. Um, Robin Harris, man. A lot of people don't even know about Robin Harris, which is crazy. Man, the like, King, bro. People don't know that the show that uh, Martin ended up getting was Robin Harris' show. Robin Harris had, and he had about a five movie deal mm, before he passed. Mm. And he was getting ready to take over Hollywood. Yeah, because he was warming up with Do the Right Thing, House, House Party. Party. Um, Movie wise, those only two. That yeah, I those only ones that he got. But Baby Kids, Baby Kids was on the way, but they ended up turning into a cartoon. Yeah. But yeah, man, come on, bro. Like he was getting ready to take over Hollywood. I didn't. So the Martin Lawrence show was originally designed. Gonna be, for it's gonna be Robin, Robin Harris. Show. Yeah. And Martin was a pupil of Robin Harris. Mm-hmm. Like he looked up to him. He actually turned down. I forgot what show it was. Martin turned down some show or movie or something. In honor of Robin Harris, I think like he was still mourning him, so he couldn't oh, do it. I, I can't remember what that movie, damn, but I, I heard remember. something like that before um, too. Ah, uh, it's gonna eat me alive, and I know I'm gonna figure it out <laughs> as soon as we finish recording. Um, okay, so Robin Harris, who you said the king, so is he your goat as far as stand up? Well, I mean, he's. He, you know, it's funny. Me and Pablo were just talking about this today, and we, and and I did my top five, and I can't believe I really forgot. Robin Harris, because he definitely is top. He he would be top ten, but to me, he's like he's a pioneer that's not talked about enough. Mm. Um, if you ask me, so but, then let's do it. Top five DOA stand up comedians. Mm, Dave Chappelle, okay, number one for me. Uh, Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. See, you know the thing about this, so much. This is my top five, so don't be all in my comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this ain't no, you know, it, I numbered them first two, but then to me for five, five of the best of me, I got to go with Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? You pause right there. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but the genius. But you mentioned, but you the, mentioned Jim Carrey earlier. Yeah, yeah. So like, the, the genius, the, the, the genius of Seinfeld, man, you, if you do your homework, man, mm-hmm. the brother, the, the, the brother was good. So he's in, he's in, he's in my top five. Okay. So we got Seinfeld. All right. Um, Eddie Murphy. Okay. Last one. Red Fox. Red Fox. I like that. I like that. That was a good one. Now, if we go 10, then you know what I'm saying? I got my okay. boys. So, Robin here. Harris wasn't in that one. Nah, he, I can't put him in. I, I can't put him on top five, but he's definitely, you know, you know how comedians do it, bro. It's who you respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's who you know that contributed yeah. to the, the streets that are allowing us right now. Right. They paved the way for us to be doing. And to me, he's still a pioneer, but ain't but a couple that can go up on the rush more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's just, that's the name of the game. It doesn't mean that they didn't contribute mm-hmm. um, to paving a way for us to have that stage to go up on yeah. and, and 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 make people laugh. Yeah, there's some great ones too, like uh, Bernie Mac. And one, one thing I noticed about stand-up comedians about some of the greatest ones were from the state of Illinois. I can't say Chicago. Yeah, ain't that crazy? Robin Harris, Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac were all from Illinois. Bernie Mac was Chicago, Robin Harris. Yeah, I'm going to catch some part, slack but. on Bernie, but Bernie's still my top, he's top 10. Yeah. But it's just, there's so, you, you can only have, you can only have so many in the front, but yeah. like I said, it still doesn't, and you know, we were robbed from Bernie, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. has so much more to give. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, You mentioned going up on the stage and making people laugh, which ultimately is the, you know, the 
the goal, the task of being a stand-up comedian. So let me ask you, have you ever bombed on stage before? <laughs> oh, yeah, and Atlanta, <laughs> Atlanta can prove it. Tell you, yeah, yeah, I was Mr. Bomb. Yeah, you, you know, say yeah, Atlanta? Yeah. yeah, my state name was almost Hiroshima. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about, bro, I was, I was bombing, bro. You know, I, I was walking up with a backpack doing my comedy with two triggers. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bomb, the Unabomber. <laughs> it was bad, bro. It was bad. <laughs> Oh, but, shit. but you know, shout out to Kiana Dancy and Sue Man Miller, bro, who the who were the first comedians to give me a chance. I didn't understand they was using me to open up for the opener. I I, okay. I ain't know that. You know, people still going to the buffet, but I was getting the opportunity at yeah. Footprints to go up and I would go do my comedy and 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 Zoo Man be like, y'all give it up for him. You know what I'm saying? He tried. Yeah. Hopefully he get it. You know, yeah. before he come back. <laughs> but that you know that's my partner, man. Zoo Man was one of the the comedians in um. In Atlanta, who would try to get me up, and you know, there's a lot of promoters and stuff mm-hmm. now that you know, yo, oh, you gonna come in? Nah, yeah. good. I remember. Yeah, I remember. You. Yeah, for <laughs> I remember sure. how you did me, bro. So, all right, so you started off bombing. So, two questions. One, what did you do to kind of improve to no longer bomb? And two, why did you keep going even though you were bombing? Um, I believed in myself. Um, I knew. Because the writing was good because people, there were different comedians like, yo, it didn't work for you, but I'll, I'll, I'll take that joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you don't if if you don't want it, I'll show you how to work it. And then there was mm-hmm. a comedian named Angelo Dundee uh, who put me on uh, put me on some shows. I was in there with, with you know, with, with, with Wanda and uh, uh, his name was Food Stamp at the time. And I was and I, and I did this show. And I, I totally bomb, man. I'm up there and I'm doing all my barber friends are there, Cadillac D, all my boys are coming to check me out. Yeah. And I'm up there and they just, they're just not laughing at yeah. anything. So finally I get to a joke and I'm like, yeah, man, anybody here ever been fired off a job? And somebody went, yeah, you have. Oh, man. Bruh. It took all my spirit. I was like, yo, that's my Ooh. time. I got to go. I got off the stage. And Angelo was like, yo, bro, what you doing, man? Don't you ever take yourself off stage. You rip him like you was doing them cats at the barbershop. He said, that's why I brought you in here. You man. had the whole barbershop in tears being yourself. And you let one comment discourage you. But yeah, bro, I was like, they were laughing anyway. Mm-hmm. And he was like, bro, I'm telling you, everything that you said was funny. Mm-hmm. I could go up there and say that whole set. It was, but it was your confidence. Mm. It was the way that you was delivering it. They, they, they can smell fear, wow. and you were showing fear. Wow. So did you ever? So did you adapt that tactic as far as ripping on the crowd? Because you see at a lot of stand up shows, and even I like to listen to a lot of uh, albums from stand up stand up shows. It's someone that's bold in the crowd, usually drunk or whatever, and the comic usually rips them, which actually like, you know, creates great product. You know what I'm saying? Because it's on the spot. Like, you don't have time to write it down or whatever. You, it's on the spot to rip their ass. And if you really let them have it, then, I mean, people are dying laughing. So did you ever... They, like- they're they dying laughing. Here's the thing about me. And and, and no disrespect to any comedian mm-hmm. decides that they want to, you know, uh, rip an audience member mm-hmm. because of what he got on and stuff. But to me, as a as, as a comedian, and, and I'm looking out at the audience, these people have paid money to see a mm-hmm. show... Um, I'm not going to make you the butt of my joke just to get a laugh when you paid your money um, to see a show and to come and laugh. So I'm not saying that anybody else can, you know, you can do that, but I'm even, not going to do even that. Even if the guy, like the guy that said, yeah, you are, that was something about the fire. Even if it's like in that instance where they overstepped their boundaries for you doing your art, you still wouldn't, you know, kind of joke on them? At that point, sir, you pulled the grenade out. So, yeah. okay, so <laughs> then I'm going to throw it back at you. Okay. But you have some, you, you have some people who will literally... They're just looking to all oh, yeah, look my yeah, man over yeah. there with the you know, that's a little bit different now. Yeah, that's if, harsh. If, if you if you if you start to fight, I got the microphone, I'm right. gonna win. Yeah, that's what I was I'm, talking yeah, about. Yeah. I wasn't talking about on some nutty professor shit when uh what was Dave Chappelle uh Women be shopping. Yeah, yeah. When he when he went out, <laughs> oh we it's a full bowl tonight. Right? Like I'm not talking about that where you just straight up go yeah. after dude, because that was brutal. You know what I'm saying? And How, even then you still have to to watch your tone. It mm-hmm. still has to be in in friendliness, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Even if even if you're ripping somebody, because yeah. they still and a lot of times, thank God I don't get hecklers uh-huh. a lot because I'll be on a show and yeah. I'm talking about I got the ammunition ready. I'm a super quick writer. It's like I'm, yeah. I'm I'm ready for you. Yeah, I get up. There'll be a guy that's that, that's just been heckling everybody yeah. for some reason. I get up on the stage, mm-hmm. no heckle. Mm. And I was like, man, I had the ammunition. Oh, you was ready I'm for I'm ready him. for you. Okay, and, got you, and, got and, you. And, and nothing. But I was talking to a few other comedians, and they were like, well, bro, you kind of have this personality of a, you're listening anyway to where 
yeah, there's really no room mm. <laughs> for the person to try to slide to try to slide something slick in yeah. on you because but the mistake I was making of why I was bombing to get back to the bombing uh-huh. is I was trying to put on people what I think they should think is funny instead of just my journey and my story and letting yeah. them get to know me. And it took literally three, four years of that. So I would tell any comedian that's thinking about getting into it, focus on you and your life and what you think um, is true and relatable to your life first before you just, I'm going to get out there and boom, 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 you know, mm-hmm. trying to get, it's because it's not necessary. And you'll, I've wasted a lot of years just trying to, trying to, um, push off to the audience what I think they should be laughing at. And then I'm literally waiting on the laugh. So yeah, so I told her, damn that. Nah, this is, but you might as well be going, boom, boom. Yeah. Every time you say Has something, boom, boom. And, and you can tell it's a joke. Ah, uh, okay. So it's like the laugh at my pain type thing. You yeah. got to come with a natural conversation, but you know, that takes experience. That takes time. I looked up to a lot of comedians. I'm like, man, I want that, that consistency. But the thing is, when you have a set, you have something to say. It's a difference. You've been doing podcasting long enough to know when I come up here, I know how to do it. Ain't going to be no dead space, no air, no, because right. I've been doing this, what I do. Fact. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. the confidence of having the show is a whole lot better. But I know you remember when you first started, you oh thought you could wing it. it You're was, so confident. It was terrible. That you- <laughs> I had sheets top to bottom of what to say word for word for the whole hour. I had to drink because I was so nervous. I got like yeah. drunk off Henny. Like it was terrible, bro. And you know I do what I do like about you? And and even watching your podcast, a lot of people don't understand that when you have a podcast, it's about the guests. If you wanted to have a solo show, don't have no guests and just stay up there and talk the whole time. So exactly. you're cutting people off. You 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 you've made it about yeah, I remember that one time. That's a good story. But I got a better one. No, yeah. just just let it flow as a conversation, and then people because a lot of time if they're if they if they log in, maybe they want to hear from that guest that you brought on. Literally, so it should be about them. Yeah, but a lot of people do a podcast and they you might as well just Make have it about a show themselves. about yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, I've definitely noticed that. I've been on a few well i've been on one in particular that i mean this person was just cutting me right. and Why the other guests off left and right <laughs> and i was thinking like damn this person might as well have a you know a solo show um but yeah it's, I just, it's definitely with the podcast you match the energy of the guest that's all it is like this is very informative you know inspiring so that's what it's to be now if i i've had you know some i've had in a good way i've had some ratchet shit on this show right but i match the energy of my guests if someone <laughs> want to come on here and they want to make it ratchet i'm right there with them let's right. do this shit you know what i'm saying As but you should. yeah you just with the podcast you just match the energy of the co-host that's all it is right. you mentioned how when you were first bombing you had some comedians like kind of ask if they could use what you used if you you know to make it you know their deliverance add on to it to make mm-hmm. it better if you would. I wanted to ask that. So is that kind of normal, like in the stand up comedy world where like jokes are, you know, passed around or maybe someone kind of inspires or take it a notch further, bites off of another joke? Because Cat Williams said that about Cedric the Entertainer, how mm-hmm. he like bit his joke and then they showed the similarities. It was like, well, did he really? Kind of did, but, you know, he just added his spice to it. So is that common in the comedy world? I mean, it's common because everybody knows the rules. Now, with social media, that changed the game. But in the beginning, the rules was first to TV, bro. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if a person could have the same joke, but if, if if it got to television, because no matter what you try to say, that's your joke. It's it was heard by that person first. It's gonna always be their joke anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was yours or not. You know, if you yeah. were Joe Smo and they, you know, they didn't know who you are, and this person was big, mm. you, you got to live with that. My uh-huh. thing is. You know, it's it's happened to me before and it's probably going to happen to me. It's going to happen to me again. But I don't care because God has blessed me with the creativity. Take that. I'm going to come up with 34 more anyway. Mm. It's it's the it's the game of right now. If you're not a writer mm. and you're just a performer, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But What's the you difference. Know, well, some people are great performers, but they got writers. Oh, you know what okay. I'm saying? Who can constantly bring them materials? So yeah. it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. But when you're writing your own stuff, man, it it takes a long time mm. to get thirty to forty five minutes of, mm. of 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 comedy. And anyone that, that that says different, okay, maybe they were an exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. But that's why most people tell you it takes ten years for you to find your voice. Mm. You know, I've been on tour for for six years now. And I got, I, I have 30, 35. Can I stand up there for 45 minutes to an hour? Yeah. yeah. But it ain't going to be consistent. Right. I believe 
I can give you a strong 27 to 32 that's strong. A, that's a sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. That's, what, that, that's what I have. Yeah. What can I do? And I've turned down headlining gigs because you have to, and you know, people, oh, you got the time. You can't tell me that I got the time because mm -hmm. it's when you're ready and you know when you're ready. Nobody else can tell you when you are. Yeah. And I don't want to be up there for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. I want my set to be continuous. Now you're going to have a little bit of roller coaster cuz that's just right. common in comedy, but right. nah man, you know what I'm saying? And only you know what you have in it, but some people will tell you, I mean, I got 2 hours, 3 hours, okay. Yeah. You know, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, but it's dang show going to show when you take that headlining spot yeah. and you up there and oh man, boy, it's wild out here. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What y'all want to talk about? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Come dragging, on, bro. Yeah. It's going to tell. Mm. It's going to tell, so don't lie to yourself. Right. You know, just get it tight. Right. Get it tight. Wow, man, that's dope. Um, and how many shows are you doing out here in Charlotte? Um, well, actually, I'm here um, just supporting another comedian. So, okay. Yeah, I might do a guest spot, might not. But as long as uh, Tyler's been doing shows, Tyler Chronicles has been doing shows, I've always supported him because I first started doing comedy. Mm -hmm. His brother was doing uh, comedy shows for me for Chicken Wings. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, yeah. and always believed in my movement yeah. and it's like joy you gonna make it bro your work ethic is stupid just keep doing it keep going yeah, people and, like that and, you gotta yeah. support and yeah that's what i love about the, the city of atlanta and, and and the love that i get is because they see me come through the mud mm. you know what i'm saying and you respect that you know what i'm saying because it's not it, it, it ain't easy bro yeah <laughs> especially in atlanta new york mm. it, it, you know them are some of the hardest but i would never take any i, I love being able to come through the atlanta scene because yeah. Bro, the fame don't matter in Atlanta. You get about a maybe a 10-minute curve, but mm -hmm. bro, you got to bring it. Mm -hmm. You got to bring it in Atlanta. And they're going to tell you the truth. You're going to know where you're at. Yeah. You're going to know where you're at. How long have you been in Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta since uh, 2000. 2000. Okay, so over 20 years in Atlanta. Yep. What originally brought you to Atlanta? Um, I came here in 96 to watch my cousin run in the Olympics. Okay. And, brother, when I got here, I never seen um, my people doing so well, big houses, nice cars, selling no drugs. I'm, I'm like, this is amazing. And I came to my auntie, shout out to my auntie Charlie, uh, live in Stone Mountain. Mm -hmm. And nothing but rich neighborhoods um, full of us. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I, I, and I've never seen anything legitimately <laughs> yeah. done like that, bro. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I asked my aunt, can I come back and, and, and live with her? And I did, bro. But I originally came to watch um, my cousin run in the Olympics and get them $5 sprites. They was <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, when they built everything out yeah, and everything, yeah, bro, yeah. it was amazing. So is Atlanta still holding up to that reputation today? For sure. Yeah. And a lot of people say, bro, you from L.A.? Why? Let me tell you something, bro. I got the city. I got the key to Atlanta. I got locations. Mm -hmm. I got... Uh, 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 people, producers, directors, people that are ready ready to roll as mm -hmm. soon as I'm ready to roll. Right. So I got the love of Atlanta, and I know the talent that's there. And there's a lot of talent in Atlanta mm -hmm. that um that should be given opportunities yeah. that, that are not. But trust me, bro, it's, it's coming. Yeah. Okay. I ask because I've, I've been in Charlotte for over two and, eight, two and a half years now from Maryland. I've never really been been to Atlanta. I've been for like a family reunion once and like once for like a quick second, but I've never really been to Atlanta. But you're the this is the second week where I've had a guest that's, you know, speaking highly of Atlanta and the, of the success out there. And according to my analytics, like I have a lot of people that tune in in Atlanta. So a goal of mine this year in 2024 is to do a lot of traveling to Atlanta and networking and collaborating with other podcasters and content creators. So best um, move you can make, brother. Yeah. They, they out there grinding, they getting it. Everybody is, and let me tell you something about Atlanta that's so different from California. Okay, mm -hmm. this is what I knew. This was a place for me. Yeah. When you come into Atlanta, and you decide that you want a business, mm -hmm. you go to Office Depot, get you some business cards, and you have a business. You are mm -hmm. right there. You're in business. You're a landscaper. You are a uh, uh, one lawnmower, a business card, no permits, yeah. no nothing, and people will patronize you and help you make it to the next level. It's not like that in California. You got to have all these permits, and they want nobody help you because they're afraid that you might get close to them or above them. Mm -hmm. And I say that about California. There's no racism there except for social racism. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The people who got the money, oh, get away from me if, if, yeah. if, if you don't. And it's different because when I moved to the South, it was different because people, you know, that Southern hospitality. How you doing? Hey, how you? everybody waves. Everybody, 
And I'm like, what you want? It like, throws you off at first. <laughs> yes, it throws well, you off I've at first. I'll be telling people. That it took me a whole year to adjust to Southern hospitality. People being courteous, people waving at you. Where I'm from, you thinking someone trying to set you up. Yeah, and they got to know you to speak. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. Have you ever, tell me, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever took the Southern hospitality ways back home? Yes, and, and they look crazy. at you like, like what, 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 what? can I help you? Right. Hey, how you doing? Right. Why? Why? Right. Oh yeah, dog. Man, never mind. I'm just literally, <laughs> I'm bro. Speaking. Yeah, yeah. Literally, it is the weirdest thing ever. That's why I live out here in the south, and I don't, I don't plan on going back neither. <laughs> um. So speaking of Atlanta and the success out of Atlanta, I want to talk about the first time I've ever seen you and your content. Mm -hmm. I've watched Country Wayne video series, which premieres on YouTube and Facebook, and you know, I've, I've since I don't want to say since day one, but I've caught up after you know catching up to it and whatnot. And, you know, you have the series with his kids. His son is dating Blake. And mm -hmm. then Blake's, you know, introduces her father, who is you, but then turns right. out to be the stepdad because Mike <laughs> comes into the <laughs> right. picture, right? Um, so let's talk about that, how you even got involved with... That is a funny story, too, bro, because yeah. it's like, all right, so took a step back, and then Wayne told me how the storyline was going to go, and I was like, all right, cool. And then um, I'm like, yeah, but, you know, he, he get the look, yeah, whoever this new stepdad is, and you know what I'm saying? He'll come in, he'll be in, he'll be out. And then they introduce the stepdad, uh -huh. and then I see 2,500 heart emojis <laughs> going across the comments. And I'm like, yeah, he's here to stay. <laughs> And old Jordan Jackson is probably out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then, you know, so then I'm like, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? Yo, know, that's what we doing. We Tyler Perry in this thing now. All right, uh -huh. that's cool. And then I meet Mike Bliss, and I'm like, this dude is the greatest dude ever. Was able to work with him. Great attitude. Same guy every time. Yeah. But, yeah, it was different. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because, you know, it was it was out with the old, in with the new. Mm -hmm. And a lot, you know, I was with Country Wayne day one. You know what I'm saying? We were just shooting skits, yeah. doing, uh, I was the very first person that he actually did a real long content win because he was just, you know, holding the phone mm. to his face. Okay. And I, a friend of mine, uh, Zach Veach, we shot some videos, Weatherman video. They went stupid through the roof. Then what year they, was this? This was uh, <clears throat> 2000, maybe 16. So how did y'all even like meet and start producing content together? You um, and Country Wayne? My, uh, my home club, Atlanta Comedy Theater, mm -hmm. was uh, managed by uh, uh, Garrett Abdul, who's uh, the, f the current, um, well, one of the managers for Matt Reif and a whole bunch of other people. He's, he done did he, Dave Chappelle. He was with uh, uh, Ricky Smiley, really bringing up a lot of content yeah. and a lot of great uh, 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 comedians. So he ended up managing Country Wayne for a little while, ended mm -hmm. up putting me on the tour uh, with Country Wayne. Okay. And that's how I end up um, getting that. And he's like, but you won't be able to come to all the shows, yeah. uh, but the local ones. And I was like, no, I fight for free. He's like, yeah, you'll be on all the shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, and so he ended up he putting me... the budget at yeah, first. So, so yeah, he okay. ended up, you know, because, you know, he was just starting out. He's doing yeah. one-nighters. Right. Um, and, and that's how I hooked up with him. And I was so excited. I ran to the green room like, hey, how you doing? And he was like, yeah, I know you are. I've, I've been seeing your content out there. So, you know, showed me love right off the rip. And when he told me that I was going to be to him where I'm like, yeah, because, you know, people say that all the yeah. time. You know, they L.A., yeah, yeah let's do lunch. You Hollywood know what I'm saying? Talk, I thought it was yeah. one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got the call, like, yeah, we got it. And he sends me this calendar, bro, with like 70 dates on there, bro. Mm. We're doing these cities. We're doing like nine to ten shows each, mm. each weekend. And I go out there, bro, and fall on my face. Mm. <laughs> Literally, I never performed in front of that many people. Oh, okay. And the shows, were, you know, they were okay. And this was 2016? 2016, 2016 okay. at the um, Columbia House okay. in uh, 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 Columbia, South Carolina. Gotcha. At the Comedy House. Gotcha. And I, I, did, I just didn't do that good. And one of the comedians was on the show, was like, it was telling them, no, oh, man, you need to um, get some, I know some heavy hitters. That dude just ain't got it. But you was like, no, nah, man, the dude, he got it, man. He's naturally funny. He's making me laugh. He, you know, he get it. So yeah. he pulled me to the side and he was like, yo, you got to let these people know. My fans know that I chose you. You're the person that I chose to be my feature act and let them know. So I started doing this like little testimony of like, you know, um, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. You know, Country Wayne could have chose anybody, but he chose me to be his opening act. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gave me a connection with the audience a little bit. And but it, that was about the, at the last show. So when it's time to go get my money, right? I said, yeah, I know. It's over. I ain't even look him in the face. I bagged me in to get the money. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and seriously, bro, this is a real story. You can't make this up. Yeah. And so 
he was giving my check. He was like, yeah, man, you know, uh, I said, I appreciate the opportunity, man. I'll get with you later. And he was like, no, we got uh, seven more shows in Memphis. And Memphis, and Memphis, Tennessee. I was like, we do? He's like, yeah, yeah, man. He's like, I'll get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, just let them know. So I opened up that first show, letting them know right off the rip, because I was doing a testimony at the end. Yeah. And it worked better. And then the rest of history, all the shows were just good from then, bro. But mm -hmm. yeah, but he could have given up on me. Yeah. And he didn't, bro. But they, there was a lot of people in his ear telling him that he should. Wow, man. That's what's up, bro. And shout out to you for, you know, realizing to lay that foundation from the jump to build that connection and ultimately build that confidence within you to, you know, let you do your thing on it. Uh, that's what's up. Um, But just how you saying, you know, he had faith in you and, you know, really made sure you were good and ate and everything. I hear that a lot just from interviews he does and people that have been featured on his shows like you and Mike and Rolanda and whatnot speaking on how he makes sure everyone eats. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's important, and shout out to him for that. You know what I'm saying? Because he transitioned that. Sounds like he transitioned it from the stage to the skits. For you, right? sure, yeah. bro. Like, that that transition was was huge because he done took the show and made it to an all-out soap opera. Literally. And, and uh, a lot of people can learn from it because the storyline is really um, the direction to go. So, you know, this brother really had great ideas and the fact that uh he was able to take someone that nobody really believed in because mm -hmm. I, was, I was catching a lot of flack in atlanta oh this mm -hmm. guy ain't funny you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying uh, he could have somebody better he didn't listen to that and it changed my life and but now you know you got to be transparent you know you, you changed my life but i also rechained my life by not being financially correct with the money you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying you start making money like that you're on tour yeah month years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when saving, you know, I got mm -hmm. these red bottoms. Yeah. Okay. So that, so that <laughs> one, uh, so the one skit, a uh, skit I really like is when Mike kind of reimburses you with a check and what you say, <laughs> I want to get me some, what you call them? Balenciagas. Yeah, some some Balenciagas. <laughs> Balenciagas, right? So that was kind of, so does like a lot of like, is it like transparency between the real world and the skits a lot? Because the, the real bro, names are something. used. Yeah, the, the storyline is still going right now. Uh -huh. The storyline that I brought to Mike, which is the uh, 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 the D situation, uh -huh. the poker, the gambling, all yeah. that was my real life, bro. Wow. So that was easy to 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 and and to see where it's expanded from and still going mm -hmm. after because. Wayne had left and went to uh he, he he went out the country for a little while to shoot this 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 great uh TV show that's about to come out real soon for Apple TV. Okay. So me and Mike was there running the page, doing the doing all the production stuff. And like Mike really uh took me up under the wing and gave me an opportunity that it would have been hard to really get. So you listen to my input. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He could have had an ego then like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm a right now, bro. Yeah. But you know, I, you know, I had a lot of information to give him. Right. He used it yeah. and 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 destroyed it. And it was just, it was just amazing for us to be able to come together like that and put real life situations in it because the relatability is gonna be there when you when right. you're coming from a place of realness. And this same thing on stand-up. Yeah. As in video, mm. being real, being transparent, Which bring real that, life. yo, yeah, you're real. but you know, who wants to be vulnerable? Who wants to say, hey, I, 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 I should have did better with the money. Right, no, nah, you want right. to say, no, nah, because you, you still going to have the $800 shoes that you shouldn't have bought. You know what I'm mm. saying? You, wow. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 facts. But the real transparency is who hasn't messed up a bag. Right. You know so what I'm saying? relate to it more. No matter yeah. how big the bag is, we done messed up some Everyone money. Has. We, Everyone everybody has. has. Especially when you got your first hands on something decent. You like, can relate to that, has. bro. Come yeah, on. Yeah, life is a window, not a mirror. I like that. Um, Overall, it sounds like the staff, I hear, I hear good things about the staff just in general. Like, it's great energy. Throughout. Family, bro. Yeah. It's all family, mm -hmm. and it's it's and it's and love. Um, When you see each other, it's love. When you don't see each other, it's DMs, it's text messages, how you doing, what's up? And... I like the togetherness of that and and to know that you got family for life. I got Mike Bless as a brother for life. I got Rose as a sister for life. Amber as a sister for life. Erica supports everything I do. And 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 really the whole team. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Everybody, you know, you name drop. Yeah, he didn't say me, you know, but you know, that cast over there and the things we got accomplished yeah. is is just love. But I, you know, I got a shout out to the team that 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 I have with me too, though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I got Pablo, Kelly Kells, uh, uh, Myron Jewell. Um, you know, there's a lot of us. I hope I didn't forget. Did I forget anybody, Pablo? That's it. That's the squad. And um, so 
it's you know <clears throat> because you need that team of people to motivate you yeah. to stay motivated to 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 to, to keep bouncing ideas off of each other and yeah. I'm I'm the type of guy if I rock with you bro I'm not going to let you sleep mm. at all we yeah. we getting it yeah, we ain't no it. ain't no I'm tired ain't no right. we mamba mentality yeah. you know what I'm saying so I'm the best friend you ever want to have bro cuz I'm going to hold you accountable yeah. I'm going to make I'm going to make you go get it even if you don't feel like getting it because that's what a real friend does a real one not what you you know, one of here is what you need to hear. Yeah, you, you, you need that. You need Ask K-Dub. Kelly K Dub would tell you, bro. Like I've been on plenty of sets with him. I'm like, nah, bro, you can do way better than that, man. Mm -hmm. that, that, you 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 better than that. Yeah. Don't let them. Don't let them. Uh, 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 they, 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 it ain't right, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah, maybe it take. And I, that's why I am on my content now. I'm not finna shoot. I used to shoot 50 skits and hope the 20 hit. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that no more. Yeah. We're gonna shoot this one till it's done right. Cut, mm -hmm. cut, yeah. cut. <laughs> until, until we get it. Quality, you know, quantity. That's what's up. So as far as the skits, um, it's going great. Like you said, it's pretty much a soap opera at this point. Is it still going? And is there anything like more or bigger at the end of the road with it? Like what's? Oh yeah, it ain't gonna never stop, bro. Yeah. Like it's it's a it's a it's a continuous story. Um, my storyline, people can hear. Why you ain't on the country, Wayne? Skits, right? Well, you know. Wayne, you put put you know, it's put me in, coach, when he's ready. The storyline mm -hmm. is there. You know, he's already told me where it's gonna go. So yeah. the last episode was me, um, me getting saved, mm -hmm. and it's gonna it's gonna roll from there. But you know, there's a million storylines on there. He's one person, so it's so, never gonna stop. Ain't no stop. Well, you know, well, I mean, I'm, I, I'm I'm not saying Fast and the know, Furious is gonna no, go for the next fifty years, but it I'm saying. ain't gonna stop. Now I didn't say that you know some of the people, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying might yeah. be moving on right. to bigger and better things because yeah. you know that's that's, that's just the ultimate life. goal, honestly. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, because you know he got a TV show coming up, a lot of stuff coming up. So yeah. it's but the, the 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 you know the machine gonna always be there. Maybe new right. faces, but you know it, right. it, it don't stop. That's what's up, man. And um, yeah, as mentioned before, the King of Hearts comedy tour this oh, spring man. that you're so gonna ready, be on so March twenty, March fifteenth through May twenty fifth. A lot of cities on there. What city are you looking forward to the most on there? Uh, Houston for mm -hmm. sure. Why um, Houston? It's comedy state, bro. Oh, okay. Like you know what I'm saying? They, they 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 come to laugh. They mm -hmm. come to enjoy themselves. Uh, really, it there really ain't no city on there. I don't like. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's much. They yeah. all of them are the same, really. Because you, hey, you don't talk about my dad. Really, yeah. you almost trapped me right there. You <laughs> see me? <laughs> I thought, I love them all. Though, well, you're you know? smart, man. But you're I'm looking smart. forward to Houston. I, I, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's the first one, and I need that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, with with tours, whether it's for comedians, musician, whatever it may be, what city like usually kind of brings? I mean, all of them bring the best out of you. But which do you look more, more forward to? The first one because it's fresh. The middle one because you kind of got a feel, or the ending, which is like okay, it's kind of coming to an end. You know, that's a good question too, bro. Because you know, in the beginning, that's why I try to stay on these stages though. But you know, it's you know, I, I would say towards towards the end. You know, because it's not like when you're doing a uh, go down to the comedy zone where you got six shows. It's one and done. Yeah. You know, so you go in and. You, you know, no matter, you always be the hardest on yourself. You know, yeah. you may go in there and, and get a standing ovation, but you know, and it, it might have been a hundred people. I could have had 106. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's yeah. that's gonna always be your mentality. Right. So all the it you you have fun no matter what. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you go to cities, you know, you it's it's different levels of love that you feel in. You know, I feel like if I do my special, when I do the special, it's definitely gonna be in Orlando. Because mm -hmm. that's that's just a it, that that's a city. That um, you know, even when I'm in the streets, people are stopping their cars and like, "Hey, what's up, George man?" You, yeah. And it's so funny though because my character, even on the country, Wayne is, is one of the worst characters. Like, it, it, this guy is a bum. He's <laughs> a degenerate, full <laughs> thief, yeah, deadbeat. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, and and then people were like, "Yo, man, you're my favorite. I just love you to death. Can I get a picture?" I'm like, "But." What's your name on that? Yeah, you said I should get the birthday party and I get away with everything. And oh, yeah. and, you know, I'm so sick of George. Just sick of George. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? But when they when they meet you, they say, Yeah, we're sick of George. That just have to be your name. It's the character we yeah, think of, but we rock with you, George. Right, right. But it's it's all love in the streets, bro. It's that's all love up. in the streets. That's what's up, man. Um looking forward to the y'all when y'all come out here in Charlotte, you're gonna be at where you gonna be at? The zone or the, the um, uh Bojangles? Nope. It's a uh, uh, dog. I just looked it up because I'm gonna ride by there and shoot something in front of it. But it's um ah, it's a funny name. It's uh because I was trying to figure out like because if you look at it, I'm about to look you it up. you pronounce it out, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is the um oh, it just has the city. It doesn't show the venue. No, it should on the uh if you go like to on your page, ticket Matt. No, if you go to um ticket master the actual link that's on my page and okay. you click on there, it, it it'll show in Charlotte. I forgot the it's like the 
the Gozon or the Gozon. Which which uh, link? The um that country wing right there, the third one. Yeah, right that, here. Yeah. Is that like the Govan Theater or something? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely pulling up just so you know. All right, so got you. All right, here we go. Houston. I mean, that's okay. That's Houston. We got Little Rock, New Orleans. Okay, Ovens Auditorium. Yeah. I was okay. like, is it ovens, ovens? <laughs> or ovens? I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> but sure. But it's going to be hot. That's what we're trying right. to tell you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Good segue. Good segue. Hey, listen, he's a professional, y'all. Yeah, as you, know you can what clearly see. That's what I do, man. That's as, okay. As Couple can... of quilo. <laughs> <laughs> she love me again, man. <laughs> well, listen, Jordan, man, um, I really appreciate this. You know, I'm not necessarily in the, you know, comedy world, but I like to consider myself in the entertainment world sure. at this point. We all, and, all of us. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I grabbed a lot of great insight from this, um, you know, from the personal and professional side of Jordan Jackson. And again, like I said, this is not Jimmy Walker. This is Jordan Jackson sitting That's right. in front of JJ. right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Ain't that funny how they ended up like that? J J. Yeah, and I Jordan was thinking that Jackson. when I was writing the notes, I'm like, hold on, his initials are J J. I thought that had something to do with it as well, but I mean, just yeah, it just happened to fall like that. But think about it, how could I lose though, bro? Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Jordan Jackson. Mm. There was no way I was losing. Bro. Wow. There was just, there was just no way it was gonna happen. Wow. But shout out to people like you though, who give us the platforms to come on to, and to be able to promote, to be able to drop gems, to be able to show. Um, the fan base, another side um, of what we could bring. So, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for having me and Pablo. I'm sorry he drunk up all your water, but, you know, he does it everywhere we go. That's all good. He drunk all my wine, too. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Which is crazy because he does a lot of wine. But that's another story. Um, and nah, and just, 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 just thank you for having me, bro. Real yeah, talk. No problem. This was a pleasure, like I said, you know, because, um, again, we, we see from the outside looking in. So to get this, it's like a little, it's literally a roller coaster that, you know, we enjoy the whole way through. So, you know, this was a pleasure, man. Seriously. Thank Appreciate you for, it, you know, pulling up and making this happen. All right. Yes, and uh, his, he, he, I'm the type of person who's been doing this for a long time. If if you want to reach me, you can reach me at who is Jordan Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> or you, no, Jordan Jackson's on YouTube. Uh -huh. Who is Jordan Jackson on Facebook? Mm -hmm. And Jordan Jackson on Facebook. And uh, who is Jordan Jackson on Instagram? And the Jordan Jackson Show. Uh, uh, dot com. All right. And I'm going to yeah. drop all that in the bio so that way y'all can be kept up to speed on yeah. everything that is Jordan Jackson. Jordan Jackson. Boom. That's what I um, for y'all tuning in, I got to thank y'all, of course, because this would not be possible without y'all. If you enjoyed this content, I ask that you comment, like, subscribe, share it out, boost the algorithm a little bit. And if you're listening, tune into YouTube. I mean, the visuals is on point. You know, like I try to really bring the visuals to life with this. And I think so far it's been, you know, doing just that. So tune into YouTube if you're listening. But nonetheless, no matter how you're tuning in, I truly appreciate y'all. So make sure that you subscribe, that you can be kept up to date on every future episode. And until next time, Ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. This is Day by Day with Jordan Jackson. We out. Peace. Hey, take it day by day. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm about to clip that and, and make that my fucking thing. I'm about to clip that and make my thing. <laughs>